I am interviewing the Kathy Duffy. This is interview number two with Kathy. So if you want to know the woman behind the website, kathyduffyreviews.com, check out interview number one. But today we are talking all about how to choose your homeschool curriculum and everything somebody needs to know. Well, maybe not everything, but a lot of things that a new homeschooling parent needs to know as they are scouring the mountains of curriculum. So Kathy, welcome to the Homeschool Think Tank Parenting Podcast for the second time. Yeah, I'm glad to be back again. Uh, we had such a great chat last time. So I love having you. Sure I like yeah. you could just come month after month or week <laughs> after week. I, I love visiting with you. So for those who don't know, Kathy Duffy is like the queen of homeschool curriculum. She started her website in the 80s and has just stayed with all things curriculum all of this time. So Kathy... I am approaching this interview as though I don't have a lot of knowledge. And in many ways, I don't. There is so much to know. But I want to be really helpful to that parent who is just getting started with homeschooling and to those parents who are in those transitional stages between elementary and middle school, middle school and high school. So yeah. let's start with the, the brand new homeschooling <laughs> parent. Let's say I'm like thinking I'm fed up with the school system, or maybe I don't even want to put my kids in public school. Where do you even start? Well, you have to start with your state and local laws about homeschooling. You need to find out what the situation is where you live, because you need to know what your options are, because they vary from place to place. So you have to find, and this is, don't go to your local school to ask, <laughs> find a homeschool group. Uh, and if you're having trouble finding them, you can go to the um, HSLDA, Homeschool Legal Defense Association. It's hslda.org. And they have links to groups. Um, uh, homeschool World Practical Homeschooling Magazine's website also has links to groups. Uh, so find a local group or at least a state group to get information about your state laws and know what your options are. Uh, I know I live here in California and there are, you know, like the Christian Home Educators Association has a manual how to, you know, how, how to homeschool. I don't remember the exact title, but a manual to get you started and it's got forms and where to go and how to do it. And other states sometimes have that too. I know California yeah. is a bigger state than others. So uh, mm -hmm. Maybe there's more information here, but still I there's a lot you. out there. I agree with you hundred percent. And actually on homeschool think tanks website, I have an article about the laws for homeschooling referring you to HSLDA and various state organizations. It's at this Good. time, sort of a work in progress because there is so much. And for the new homeschooling parent laws, very significantly. Right. It's a tremendous difference around what's legal in one state versus another. And I have listeners from around the world on right. my podcast. So <laughs> country to country. And even on that, in that same article, I have a link to, um, I, I believe it goes to HSLDA, but it's the sort of their international laws. Right. And same thing, same recommendation talk yeah. to your homeschooling groups because I do think sometimes you get um I don't necessarily always think it's intentionally false information but sometimes it is from your government websites not even websites it's more like personnel at the school they don't know they just don't because, know yeah 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 they're they're here for they're uh this is how I say it a uh, homeschooling purpose, a homeschooling website or organization's purpose is to help parents homeschool their children. A government's website or organization schools, their purpose is to get your children in school because there's two, no, two main reasons in my mind. I want to see if you have the same reasons. Well, if you're, if you're willing to answer the question, what do you think the reasons are that schools want kids 
in school versus <laughs> being like, there's options. <laughs> yeah, that's, go back to the curriculum. No, that's, e- that's easy. <laughs> Control and money. It's, you know, and yep. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing in my mind, control and money, because through the schools, a lot of things are brought to your children. Here's one example. And this one, in my opinion, was a good thing. When I was a kid, there was a huge push for kids to wear seatbelts in cars. It wasn't normal, right? And my dad, I remember, started wearing a seatbelt because I harassed him because I was taught at school. So in that instance, I think it was a good thing. But sometimes there are things that are taught that we don't necessarily agree with right. or think are good things. Yeah. And, so. and an example of how that can mislead you, if you were to talk to somebody from a public school, they would probably try, like here in California, our options, okay, remember, it might be different in other states, but they would probably try to steer you, they know you want to homeschool, they would steer you to a charter school, and that charter school is under government control, mm-hmm. and, you know, people feel like, oh, well, we're homeschooling, we're in a charter school, but your child is a public school student, and I hear the stories over and over and over again, totally consistent, that, The charter schools, they enroll you and they promise you all this stuff. And then they tighten the screws year by year, taking Mm -hmm. away things and requiring more things and limiting options and, you know, more and more control all the time. While we're talking about that, let's address the public schools that are online because they really, in my opinion, from what I've noticed, try to almost make it look like it's homeschooling but it's not do you right well typically these are charter schools virtual schools you're talking about Mm -hmm. right and yeah the online schools k-12 public education yeah well yeah yeah and it's tricky to know when you're looking at them it's it you know it's not always obvious at first glance and some of the programs simultaneously offer enrollment to private students paying their own way and students coming in with government funding. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the difference you can tell is when, if they're getting it for free, the government's funding it, they're controlling it. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's the difference. You're gonna pay for it if, it's, if you're doing it mm-hmm. on your own, if it's private schooling. If yeah. the government's funding it, you're under their control. Yeah, and while it sometimes might not seem like such a big deal, I think it is a pretty big deal. <laughs> it, it, it is but at the same time now you know i just i know parents are here bringing their pulling their kids out of a public school classroom they're desperate tight on money oftentimes mm-hmm. that charter school is a stepping stone on the way to educational freedom they need yeah. to do that have the security of doing that the first year or two but i would encourage parents to not stay there you know that's a use it as a stepping stone to figure out how to do it and yeah. i i think the money, the cost sometimes uh, frightens parents into staying there. And it's important to realize that the homeschooling doesn't have to cost that much. There are so many Mm -hmm. free resources, uh, free things available to homeschool, low cost options, much more efficient options. When you're Mm -hmm. doing it on your own outside the school, you've got the ability ability usually now it depends you might be in a high stru- you know state that has really tight structure but usually you can move your child forward at the rate they want it so they can be doing third grade math and first grade language arts and be where they need to be in the subjects and it's not unusual for homeschooled students to finish sooner than other students because it's much more efficient doesn't mean that yeah. that's your goal some some children need all the time you give them and maybe more but you can school you know you can do the education much more efficiently mm-hmm. so you know it, it, sometimes you just have to kind of step back from the way you think about the school experience yeah and realize yeah. it can be very different and before we really go into the curriculum part too i want to address this as well because i think it's also a stepping stone for parents there are so many different approaches and styles of homeschooling. And again, I've got an article about that on the website, but I believe that, especially if you were brought up in the public school system, 
you really feel like education equals school, like homeschooling needs to look like school at home. And if you can explore all the different styles of homeschooling first, that will open up your mind to the educational freedom that is available to you. You know, that's funny because I was just talking with a gal last week about this. And she said she has this kind of gut feeling like if school is is fun and interesting, it's not really school (laughs) because that's what she grew up with. School was a pain, you know, it can't be be right. It can't be good if it's having too much fun. That's so funny. Just yesterday, I was visiting with a mom, sort of similar things where uh, she was considered, she was helping her daughter think about her future and career choices. And she thought, well, she's avoiding the things that she think of be hard. And I said, well, do you think a career should be hard? <laughs> I like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny what well, we just sort of feel like, well, if it's not serious and it's not hard and it's not just like no fun or if it's too much fun, fun. let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Then it can't be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we've absorbed these things, you know, and it's it's hard to step back from that. And this gal been homeschooling for a number of years and, you know, is still wrestling with, well, I need to make it more like regular school. Um, You know, I've tried to convince her to use games and other things for math, you know, for, you know, drilling on math, you know, it's well, you know, just, you know, she's still got this thing in her that stops her Mm -hmm. from doing that. Kathy, I had explored some other styles of homeschooling early on. And let's say unschooling. I had read a book, I think it was by Mary Griffith, maybe. Um, And it really opened up my mind to the possibilities. And and at first, I want to be clear with parents, unschooling doesn't mean you're not educating your children. It's not the lazy man's way out. It's yeah, to me, it's like intentional education that's different. Yeah. Um, but I could, while I could see there's a lot of value there. Now, I also see a lot of value in curriculum, especially around something like math, right? Right. Um, I just could not ever let go of the reins enough to, (laughs) and because I was so well-trained in school, I was so well-trained about what education looks like. Yeah. And my invitation to parents who are considering homeschooling is okay. Stay to the same thing. If you need to start out with sort of looking like school is at home, that's okay. But let your mind start opening up and exploring right. all of the ways that your children learn and can learn. It doesn't have to look like it does in the public school system. Yeah. And the first year when you're homeschooling, is really a, a learning experience for your children and for you because you are learning how your children learn. You're observing them and seeing what's working, what's not working. You're figuring out what you're comfortable with. There's a, you know, it's a really, uh, you know, steep learning curve for everybody. You're oh, trying yeah. to sort all that out. And <laughs> so you give yourself a lot of mercy that first year. Definitely. Did you, yeah. when you started homeschooling your kids, did you like put a flag on your wall and do the pledge of allegiance and all the things like that. I did. <laughs> no, it, it felt no. so contrived. It lasted about two weeks, but like, it was like before my daughter was kindergarten age, we just got up and we did things and we read books and played games in the day she was kindergarten age. It's like flag on the wall, alphabet <laughs> chart. And- <laughs> well, I, I did buy three school desks. I yes. you know, used school desks. I got them. We never once used them. <laughs> they were great for storing Legos, you know, Legos yeah. and process, all these little cubbies and things on the desk to use. Um, <laughs> never once did we use this. We found out that, you know, the kitchen table and the couch and everywhere else worked better for school than desks. Yes. I, it just, it just didn't yes. fit. So there we, there's another stepping stone to the new parent for homeschooling don't feel like you have to like rearrange your whole house and make it a school 
at yeah. home. Yeah. It's okay well, to learn on the couch and at the table yeah. and maybe a little desk in the corner or whatever. Yeah. But if well, some people, works. you know, say you should, you know, have a dedicated space and dedicated mm-hmm. place, you know, there. Um, but maybe that works with some children. Mm-hmm. You know, you so you know, you you again do you what get works to know for your, your own kids. children. Yes. And mm-hmm. you know, I, I'll give you a great example. We figured out that my oldest son, his his best way and time to do math was late late in the day, even in the night, in his top bunk bed, laying out, sprawled out there with the radio on, <laughs> because radio blocked out excess things. By the end of the day, he burned off his energy and could concentrate on his math. And that's when he could do it the best. Yeah. And yep. defies everything you've ever thought about the way that it should be done. Took and I'll a share lot of years to figure one. that out. My oldest daughter loves to write like stories. Her best writing time was when she woke up in the morning, she'd go sit in a recliner, have her laptop and type away because during the night she was dreaming and she came up with all all sorts of great story ideas. And that was her favorite time to write. But then as a homeschooling mom, I sometimes sabotaged her because I felt like you need to get started for the day. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, what's and you're, wrong with that picture yeah, and you're not writing what I want you to write that's right <laughs> you know, or yeah. what the textbook thinks you should be writing right now yeah all right oh. so, well I want to move on to the homeschooling curriculum yeah. by the way Kathy has a new book 103 topics for curriculum and I have an article all about Kathy on the website and I will put a link to that book in there before we release this episode. Yeah. And it's only available as a PDF because it's loaded with links to mm-hmm. you know the publisher's websites to scope and sequence, you know, all kinds of different things in there that you need, you know, need to be able to jump to. So yes, it's only definitely. a PDF. Well, it, it, the world is changing and it's just, yes. uh, it makes more sense in this day and age because actually a lot of programs anymore are only offered online. They're yeah. not even available in a textbook form anymore. And yeah. so Kathy, let's start here with the curriculum. How do you choose what curriculum you're going to even look at? There's right. so much, especially anymore. There's always new curriculum and new people bringing great things to the world right and it there's more information than ever before so how yeah. do you choose what you're even going to look yeah at? And, and that's a, that's a great question because when i first started reviewing you know this is back in the 80s there was hardly anything for homeschoolers and so i started writing my first books were just reviews and then as there got to be more and more products i realized oh how do you know how to sort all this out and now, you know, now it's just absolutely overwhelming, ridiculous, the number of choices you have. So um, I, when I started the top picks book, I started with 100 top picks and then went to 101. Now we're at 103. But the first five chapters in the book are about how to choose curriculum. So I walk you through and this is, you know, don't skip this to get to the reviews. You got to do this. It, how, do, how to set your own goals? How do you know? what's important, Uh, you know, what are, you know, you can look at the standards, the educational standards and see what other people are doing, but you generally don't have to stick to those exactly. Or, and sometimes you've got a lot of freedom to go other directions totally. So again, knowing your state laws is important for that, but setting your own goals. And that's not just the academics because it might be that you wanna work on study skills. You've got a child who's just really bad at buckling down and, you know, working, you know, reading and thinking about things just doesn't want to bother. Uh, Or maybe you've got um, a child, you know, who's got other issues that you need to deal with. Like maybe they need uh, vision therapy. They're having trouble with reading because they need vision therapy. And you really need to jump off and do that. That might be a higher goal than getting through any curriculum this year. So you've got to figure those things out. So what are your goals? Um, and you mentioned briefly, you know, the different approaches to education. We have lots of different approaches, and it sounds almost like a foreign language now because you need to know about Charlotte Mason and classical and unschooling and delight directed learning, you know, all of these terms that we throw around. So I, you know, walk people through that with, you know, questionnaire charts that, you know, they can, you know, fill in, you know, to figure out what approaches 
to education are likely to work for them. And then the learning styles. How do your children learn best? How do you teach best? Yeah, you know, we default usually to teaching our children in ways that we learn best. And again, here's that back to observing your children. You might not know this until after you've taught your children for a while, but watching and seeing what's effective, how do they learn best, figuring out their learning styles. So then I take all that information and with the top picks, I've got charts in the book that uh, at a glance, you can kind of see once you've figured out which of those factors, you know, what approach to education, you know, your goals and learning styles, you can look at the charts and kind of zoom in, zoom in on what is likely to work for your children. And then the rest of the book are the reviews of those products. You can go, you know, check it out, say, oh, does this really sound like it's what I want? And, you know, an alternative to that, my website, I've got thousands of reviews on my website. And I've got an advanced search tool there you can use for free. I and only discovered that last yeah, year because I hadn't been to the website for a while. Well, it's, amazing. it's fantastic because, you know, I reached a point where I wasn't able to find things on there. I thought, well, this <laughs> on is, your own if I can't find it, <laughs> what are other people doing? And so, you know, I had my web guys working on, you know, trying to come in and we're, it's a work in progress. We're still trying to fine tune it and everything, but um, you know, you can go in there and plug in, you know, what learning style you want. You want fourth grade American history uh, from a secular perspective or a Christian perspective. And, you know, it's all kinds of different factors you can use to filter that down to products that are likely to work for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can do that, but you won't know the first part of that book helps you to understand how to think about all of those different factors, which so, is why we talked yeah. about all this other stuff up front, because if I always want to interview somebody, you know, it's great if they go to your website and they look at all these things, but I also keep in mind a portion of the people will never go to either one of our websites and they're going to leave with the information we bring them in this interview. So I want to be really helpful to those people too, even if they aren't, even if they have no money to buy curriculum and they're simply using the library and going to yard sales and looking for things, right? So I, yeah. I want to be helpful to all the people, whether you're wanting to go buy something or it's something free, because this whole concept, all of it, opens up your mind yeah but yeah and now I don't well, yeah. remember why I said that well, no, but it's important you know and I you know this is a reason why I'd encourage people to you know you know even go to my website I've got yeah. now a section you know, where a button like you can push you know to find free curriculum because there are complete yeah. programs and you know they're for free that are excellent <laughs> so you know lots mm -hmm. of supplemental things that are free too but uh more That's and awesome. more I honestly didn't realize you had a free section in there. Kathy. Well, that was something Great. we added this last year because it was a growing a number of, of things. On my website too. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so what do you think some of the biggest mistakes are that new parents, new parents new to homeschooling make? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there are lots of different ones, but I think the biggest one is trying to do too much, trying to, trying to be perfect, worrying about people looking over your shoulder, worrying about what everybody else thinks rather than what's working for your family. Yeah. I and, struggle and, with that a hundred percent. Yeah. I, th I think we all do. Um, but you know, stepping back and, you know, just tell people, Hey, you know, we're, we're exploring options this year. We're, we're, we're experimenting you know, or something, you know, something to just give, get them to back off. Uh, give yourself you, that time. Kathy, I know I'm interviewing you, but I have something that I think would be helpful to parents with that. Um, I, right now I am going through a coach certification to become a certified life coach. And there's a phrase that we often use, like have your own back. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, and I, I, I'm going through this very much because I had so many challenges with homeschooling. And one of my kiddos is 
definitely wired differently than the average kid. And mm -hmm. we had a lot of challenges. And what I know it's so funny, Kathy, is when I started homeschool think tank. I don't know if I ever told you, I, when I wrote my book, I completely lost the whole book. I finished it one night and then, and I didn't back it up anywhere. <gasps> and the oh. next morning when I opened my computer, it was corrupted. The file was, it was gone. I had to rewrite it all. Oh. And in that, in that, you know, the, like, <laughs> yeah. doesn't that just make you cringe? <laughs> yeah. Sick to my stomach. Yeah. Just, Oh no. <laughs> and I'll get this. My brother is an IT guy. Like top notch, like has run cities, all the things. He went through my computer virtually for like five hours. He's like, Jackie, it's gone. You know, you might yeah. be able to pay somebody to get some parts back. But anyway, that's yeah. neither here or there. What happened in that time frame is that was a moment where I either was going to commit and go forth with homeschool think tank, because that literally that's like the first thing I did with homeschool think tank was write a book, which I would not recommend that, but <laughs> it's what I did. Um, or give up. And what I realized is I needed to work on my mindset if I wanted to succeed in business, because I was, I, I always feel like I've been a person who sort of wears my emotions on my sleeve. And I, at the time I thought I need to toughen up. What I now believe is I needed more awareness around my emotions. But so I started on this really deep dive on mindset. And while I started that for growing homeschool think tank and being able to serve the homeschooling community in a way I envision, which like extends beyond my own life, right? Yeah. Um, I realized it helped me become a much better parent. So all of that is to say, if it all starts with your thoughts, and if you can think we're exploring this year, we're trying some things out, we're learning. And from that place, you'll have this feeling of more of a, a sense of peace as opposed to a thought like, I don't even know what I'm doing. What am I thinking? Homeschooling my yeah. kids. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. those are real thoughts parents have. Like, oh, yeah. I should just put them back in school. I'm going to screw my kids up. <laughs> like all these things. But if you can turn a negative thought on its head and be like, okay, instead of I don't know what I'm doing. We're really learning. We're all this together. I'm getting support. Like all these different thoughts. And, and from there, you'll have a place of peace and maybe curiosity. And so you're going to take actions that lead to better results versus a thought that's like, I'm going to screw up my kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you're going to take yeah. actions that lead back to school, really. And, so that, and that can transfer to your children too. Because Absolutely. they can be part of that learning process. You can be, you can ask them, do you prefer this? Do you prefer that? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. get your feedback from them and let them help shape what you're doing as well. There's nothing wrong with that unless they don't want to do anything. And, you know, but, you know, give them a but choice of why? one or two things. It, it, you know? Again, curiosity, if they don't want to do anything, there's a reason for it. Why? Yeah. Are they having a vision problem is there did, my daughter had like sensory processing issues mm -hmm. um and was easily like the average homeschool group not good I if, as a parent I oftentimes felt like what was great for my oldest was terrible for my youngest right. yeah. and it could be very a very difficult line to walk because one was a social butterfly and the other those huge group things just gave her anxiety that was like, I looked like a completely crazy mother because I didn't understand my kid right. at the time, yeah. right? I didn't understand that a lot of noise was overwhelming. Like even you talk about playing games um, is one approach to helping your kids learn. At some point I learned I needed to put a towel on the table because the sound of dice rolling was <laughs> overwhelming to her. Like, yes. You know? And you don't even think about these things no. and you might not, they might not know to be able to verbalize it. They just mm -mm. have these feelings. And 
I was yeah. I was reading an article in Practical Homeschooling just the other day. Uh, I don't know how old the issue was, but um, a mom was writing about their first couple of children. They did, you know, real books, you know, Charlotte Mason, you know, more fun, experiential type learning. And they adopted other children who were older and came from rough backgrounds. And those kids needed something entirely different. They were not good with the loose structure. Uh, they needed something, uh, you know, I don't remember all the details, but they needed a much more structured environment, not, not the fun and stuff, but predictable, safe structure. Yes. And, and that's something, I'm sorry, go ahead. You, well, I, you just don't even, you don't think about that. What's okay. good for one family, one child is not good for other people. That's and exactly it. Homeschoolers, one size does not fit all. Yeah. And you can meet other homeschoolers and they can be very helpful, but they can also pressure you to, oh, you should do it the way I'm doing it because I'm using this particular methodology or program and I love it. You should too. And not necessarily. Mm -hmm. You have to really be able to discern what will work for you. Yes. I'm so glad you brought that all up, Kathy, because it's even... <laughs> as a, here's the mistake I made as a new homeschooling parent I thought in the beginning I thought okay I'm going to choose one curriculum and we're just going to follow it through all the way through the end you know what we did not do that at all no and I thought that was a real advantage to homeschooling but it doesn't always work and my kids didn't even do things the same way I would mm -hmm. say Oh, I'm almost of the opinion of, I mean, you see lots of old homeschooling curriculum and other stuff <laughs> behind me, but I'm almost of the opinion, just don't even worry about keeping that for the next kid, because what worked for one kid's probably going to be different for the <laughs> right. other kid and let them go their own way. Because you know what? That's the beauty of homeschooling. It does not have to be a cookie cutter education program. Right. We're all different. Yeah. Yeah. And recognizing that up front, you know, and not buying far ahead, you know, there's, there's a tendency that new parents, you know, have a, t you know, thinking like you were, well, I'm just going to get this one curriculum. We'll stick with it. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually know one mom who bought all 12 years of curriculum the first year she homeschooled. Yeah. Like she really was like, we're just going to do this all way way through. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that necessarily worked out so well. Because <laughs> well, then you have this. Here's what happens when you buy too much at once, in my opinion. You have this attachment to this money you spent, this yeah. idea you had. And instead yes. of looking at the child before you, you're like, but I bought the curriculum. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I remember this is way back, but I remember a gal, she was a good friend and they started homeschooling. They bought a curriculum, which is really in terms of learning styles and approaches was the opposite of what I would have recommended. She didn't ask me. She just, you know, went out and got it. And they were in tears every day over this, you know, they just couldn't get through it and they didn't last one year of homeschooling and she wasn't willing to dump it and go do something else because they'd put their money into it and uh, it was just so sad because it yes. didn't need to be very creative gal and they could have had a lot of fun with homeschooling yeah so when you're so stuck in your own mind about what it should look like I think that is a recipe for disaster yeah what do you think oh yeah definitely you know, and maybe back on that, a lot of publishers have free samples or things you can look at, uh, you know, and try some of the freebies on the internet, you know, do those things first, maybe even before buying curriculum, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, stumble around a bit, you know, figuring this out. And here's something I've sort of learned is <laughs> usually the table of contents are right there online. Or you yeah. can literally, you could even get most of the time a dated curriculum. It's just dated in appearance. I'll, let's yeah. say, you know, your grammar, not much has really changed about <laughs> what's actually appropriate, right? Right. But you can literally look at the outline and you could, especially in those early years of homeschooling, you can literally just look at the outline and be like, okay, we ought to look for things about this. 
and go to your library, look for books, look for games at yard sales or online yeah. on Amazon, whatever, yeah. go to a used homeschooling curriculum, you, yeah. you know, website. Um, well, and that, just I, sort of explore documentaries. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you could do that with those. I did it with first grade math and I, I might even have this still up on my website, how to do a first grade math program yeah, without a curriculum, a curriculum. Grade. you know, and I just, you know, here's the different things you're trying to do. And here are ways to do it. You know, use this game, use dice, use cards, use, mm -hmm. you know, this, that, you know, manipulatives, whatever. Um, and, and this was before computer, before all the other options we have here. You know, just here's a way to do it. And yeah, it's pretty much like you were saying, just look at what's typically done. How else can we do that? Yes, absolutely. So let me steer this conversation a little bit different now. I sort of feel like we've tackled all the things for a newbie homeschooling parents or someone who's thinking about it. Let's look at those transition times, elementary to middle school, middle school to high school. Do you have, because a lot of curriculum does not, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of curriculum that actually goes all the way K through 12 even, but you might be able to speak better about that. Yeah, but there actually are quite are a few. Looking, <laughs> okay. Uh, that as parents are looking at different things, let's say they're, they were using a curriculum they didn't even, that didn't go all the way through and they need to transition. What do you do at those transitional times? Uh, I guess I've never worried about it much because we never stuck with anything that long. <laughs> <laughs> but some people do. Some people and do. And some people, especially yeah. if you're just starting to high school and it's middle school and you've been homeschooling yeah. the whole time yeah. through or yeah. high school. And I know yeah. sort of the same uh, philosophies apply that we just talked about or principles, I should say, but especially the, maybe we should just go straight to the high school. Years. Yeah, because I because think middle that's school, where parents yeah. get. Yeah. That's where the most parents drop off from homeschooling. Right. They can homeschool all the way up to then, and then it's right. like, <gasps> right. Yeah, because <laughs> middle school now? is a fuzzy, you know, are we talking fifth grade, seventh grade? You know, people yeah. are all over the map on how you define that. And I never see that as a rough transition. You, know, you just keep on doing what you're doing there. But, but high, high school is different because you have to start giving credits. And is this worth a credit, you know, and you've got to be able to document it for college. So mm -hmm. that's when, uh, that's when people start freaking out. over. I but, did. I well, did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hit, we hit high school and it was back in, you know, back in an early time. And Dr. Raymond Moore had been telling people, well, you know, you put them back in school for high school for sure, you know, but we hit high school. And I thought, we're having so much fun and they're getting to be such interesting people. Why on earth would I put them back in school now? You know, like, mm -hmm. so we just kept right on. But uh, yes, that is more challenging. It is, it is important when you've got a high schooler to be thinking ahead. You've got to kind of think ahead about the four years. How are you going to map this out so they have those college credits? Unless you know they're not going to college. Uh, if you know that for sure, but usually we don't know for sure. You want to keep the door open. You don't open. want to limit your kids. Right, you right. You want them to have options. Yeah, and it's easy enough to do, but think think about it, you know, look at those uh, requirements carefully. Um, and here's an example of something we did, you know, like you have, typically you do biology in high school, biology and chemistry, but it's really the requirement is typically for a life science. And my oldest son was interested in botany rather than the, all of biology. And there was a Boy Scout merit badge in botany that was really challenging. And so we put together a, a unit study on botany, combined, you know, merit badge stuff. Then we had the merit badge counselor working with us. And there's a mixture of field work and book work. And then we were using part of a textbook, the part that covered botany. And, you know, just cobbling it together to create a course. It was a life science, you know, we had lab, you know, it wasn't traditional lab, but field work and, you know, some other things going on there that qualified for lab work. So that became our college prep life science course. Yeah. So you can think outside the box mm -hmm. on how to meet those requirements and it's still credible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I live in a rural area. And 
4-H is pretty big yes. where we live. And they actually, I had no idea. They have a lot of like classes. And yeah. I actually know one mom who has used 4-H courses and like New Mexico State University is over 4-H and, you know, your state universities are generally over at your county extension offices. And so they're, they're actually really good they programs are. and yeah. there's a lot to learn and they have all sorts of different things. And she used a lot of that, a lot of games, a lot of the library. And then she would lead like homeschooling groups and do, you know, a politics thing, or she did something. Uh, my kids took part in it when they were younger, all with the American girl dolls, but those American yeah. girl books, there's yeah. actually a lot of sort of educational type stuff there. And she would just build out this yeah. whole curriculum yeah. around it. Really? Yeah. It was really well, and there is a curriculum right. written for mm -hmm. the American girls. Books. I noticed that there's, there's all kinds of things it. like that. They're just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you, you know, we, we have such a narrow view oftentimes of what education looks like and just expand, expand right. your mind. And there is a way to do it where your kids will enjoy it. If you will mm -hmm. allow. Right. <laughs> and there's lots of ideas to come yeah. in and there's lots of help out there. And even back when we were doing this, we found Boy Scouts was really valuable to us. We were connected up with all kinds of experts and our, our boys got so many opportunities to learn that, you know, I would not have been able to provide if I were just trying to do it all by myself. Mm -hmm. And we connected with other families and worked together with them, just trading talents. Yes. And that was amazing. I just, you don't know, there are people who have all kinds of talents Yes, and you just, you know, look around, but now we've got all of the op options online. Uh, it, there's just so much out there that you'll mm -hmm. find something you just, you know, oh. just ask, and look around. And your local librarian, if I, I don't, I know every library is not created the same. Our library is amazing. And our librarians are phenomenal. I cannot tell you how helpful. And do you know, yeah. like, even online, there are online tutoring services in the evenings through the library yeah. like homeschoolers can take advantage of those things yeah you know yeah so there are just so many different things gosh Kathy I guess we're coming to the end of our time here <laughs> do you have did I overlook anything and I don't, yeah, we could go on. There's, there's probably a, a whole lot that we could talk about, but I think, I think it's just so important for parents to learn to trust themselves to, you know, be, be gentle with themselves uh, and their children, you know, just, you're not quit, quit worrying about what other people are thinking. Do it's none of your right business. You. <laughs> <laughs> what they're thinking, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, that, I know that's really hard. It's, it's hard not to be worried about that. But, you know, just put it aside for now and figure out what works for you. So. Kathy, thank you so much. I love visiting with you. I, you are absolutely one of my favorite guests. You are welcome here any day of the week. <laughs> like, I love, you know what I think I like about quote unquote, interviewing you. I interview you, but it's also a conversation. I don't feel like we're stuck in this square of what even you, like what you want to talk about. And I guess it's because you're just immersed in the homeschooling world and you really just care about parents and kids and everything you say, everything you do, it comes across that way. Yeah. And it, so- you know, you're just able to speak about a wider topic. And I guess that that's really what I love about visiting with you is I feel like you can sometimes talk, yes, about these specific things, but then at a higher level as well about homeschooling yeah. and about education and families and all that. I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, no, I but I, I appreciate too. It could because, you know, your listeners by now, we did not plan and we had no, I had no idea what we were going to talk about, yeah. but on, but just having a conversation is my favorite, you know, that's, yeah. you know, if you talk about fun things to do, I just, you know, love having a meaningful conversation and this, you know, I, we always do that. Yes. So. 
Well, we do. Thanks so much for being my guest on the Homeschool Think Tank Parenting Podcast today. I always love having you as a guest. And if you, as a homeschooling parent, need more information, you can go to homeschoolthinktank.com slash Kathy Duffy. I have links to everything about Kathy on that page, and I will be adding more there because I just think she's awesome. And she has great resources like 